The Archdeacon of Liverpool, who boasts the poshest name in all Christendom, Miranda Threlfall Holmes, put quite the cat among the pigeons this week by tweeting the following. She wrote, I went to a conference on whiteness last autumn. It was very good, very interesting and made me realise whiteness is to race as patriarchy is to gender. So, yes, let's have anti-whiteness and let's smash the patriarchy. That's not anti-white or anti-men. It's anti-oppression. Just let that sink in for a moment. This is a top cleric. Let's have anti-whiteness. Oh, dear. And how unfortunate that this lady of the cloth is white herself. So she'll have to cancel herself. I don't know how you cancel yourself. How do you cancel yourself? It would take a miracle, wouldn't it? But then she is a very holy lady. So I guess anything is possible. Well, on the day that she put out that tweet, she was no doubt hoping she could turn water into wine and a lot of it when she read the responses, which were not pretty. Hell hath no fury. Her tweet has now been seen by almost a million people, probably larger than the flock she gets on a Sunday morning, let's be honest. With almost a million views, but just 209 likes in social media terms, that's what we call death by ratio. The comedy actor James Dreyfus from Gimme, Gimme, Gimme said the following, Oh, grow up. What the heck is wrong with you? Why do you seek to divide when your job description is literally to bring people together? It's utterly grotesque. The revered comedian and co-host of the popular podcast Trigonometry, Constantine Kissin, wrote, This is actually true. Whiteness is to race as patriarchy is to gender in that both are linguistic tricks used to invent things that only exist in the minds of over-educated fools. And last but not least, the brilliant tech author Dan Rice is, in my view, the most perceptive when he says, doesn't sound like Christianity. Are you sure you don't follow a different religion? Well, he's absolutely right, because this is a deeply unchristian statement. And I say that as a Christian myself. To demonize a whole group of people and statistically the vast majority of her own congregation goes against everything we know about Jesus Christ. Now, this archdeacon, who I've got no doubt is a lovely person and doubtless does great work in the community and is entitled to her view. Absolutely. In my view, she does follow a very different religion altogether. Or should I say cult? It is the Holy Church of Woke. In fact, the Archdeacon looks to be a fully signed up member in her Twitter description about herself. She's got the inevitable pronouns she, her in there, therefore supporting the idea that you can change your sex and that men are women and vice versa. I've got to say, I'd love to know what the man above thinks of all of that. Or should I say the woman above? Or maybe God is gender neutral. Who knows? Now, I'd speculate that this archdeacon likely supports the Church of England's decision to pay reparations for slavery, even though the church is linked to this awful crime, are challenged by some historians like the brilliant Robert Toombs, for example. And either way, one has to wonder why leaky church roofs, education, community work, lonely pensioners and the homeless in the parish are not the exclusive recipients of the church's wealth. Rather than atoning for crimes committed over a century ago in a country responsible for ending the whole wretched endeavour in the first place, none of it really makes sense. Of course not. This is the Church of Woke. Particularly this bizarre tirade against whiteness. Apart from the wild hypocrisy of this priest being white herself, did this presumably intelligent person who has even published books, no less, did she not worry that these comments and this view might be prejudicial, inflammatory, ignorant, tin-eared or even, I don't know, racist in its own right? It certainly goes against everything Martin Luther King stood for. The leader of the civil rights movement in America dreamed of a colorblind society. But all the likes of this archdeacon can see is skin color. And this supposedly Christian person is happy to condemn people that have the wrong kind. 
And with Archbishop Welby, who I do admire for a lot of things, campaigning against the Rwanda policy, which may or may not be workable, but it's the only serious attempt to stop the humanitarian crisis that is the illegal crossings of the Channel, it's very clear that the Church of England have been increasingly captured by a progressive cult who will have you believe that our history is shameful, that open borders are compassionate, and that you are inherently a bad person if you have the wrong skin colour. Wow. With dwindling congregations and endless political rows, the Church of England is on its knees for all of the wrong reasons. And is it any wonder why? The kind of language used by this archdeacon is appalling, unchristian and wrong. May God forgive them.